Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. And this is now part five of our series on advanced COVID 360. And as normal, the webinar registrants are with me as well. And I've opened it up temporarily to YouTube for the first section. And then after the first section, we'll let the YouTube audience go. And then we'll continue with our um, presentation. Um, so just in, so that you have an idea as to what it is that we are doing, um, I will show you where we are in terms of the sequence. So this is what I'll largely be covering uh, today. So I'll be going through a number of slides here. You can see it on the left. Um, so it's about six sections looking at asymptomatic disease. The first part was just an overview. Then we have here looking at bronchitis with COVID-19. Then we're looking at a viral pneumonia. Uh, and then we are explaining the bit about moderate and severe COVID-19 with microclots, differentiating it. And then finally, in the last section, we'll be looking at long COVID symptoms. So as you can see, this is quite a comprehensive overview of the symptoms around COVID-19. And in that, we'll also be looking at some of the characteristics with regards to why some of these symptoms occur and why they're so unusual. As I mentioned before, this is part of our Advanced 360. This is the pre-launch beta phase. So I'm putting all of the things together. And you can see we had part one where we looked at the virus and the characteristics of the virus. Every module is probably about five minutes long, some five to eight minutes long. There's part two looking at the immune system. This was IgG4. Um, and then part three was looking at upper airway immunity um, and the mucosal immunity. Part four was primarily about autoimmunity and explaining that COVID autoimmune response. And then we're coming now to part five. So this is going to be over 30 modules, short modules so far. So if you are interested, there will be a link in the description uh, shortly for you to be able to participate. So um, thank you for anyone who is joining me live. And for the registrants, please remember after I say goodbye to YouTube, stay and ask questions and we'll go through the other sections. Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan and we are looking at part five of COVID-19 Advanced 360, where we are focused on the COVID symptoms, the essential facts about them to help you to understand the disease. As usual, there's a disclaimer that the content here is basically to share with you information and it cannot replace you seeing your doctor or going to a hospital if you are unwell. This does not class as medical advice, but certainly information that will help you in your decisions about medical related things on COVID-19. So COVID has shown us that it can present with a wide array of symptoms, some of which are not commonly seen with other viral infections. The key things that I'll be focused on in this presentation is I'll be looking at the difference between asymptomatic and symptomatic disease. This causes a lot of confusion for people. The symptoms that are characteristic for COVID and are a bit unusual. We cover throughout the presentation and we're going to explain why people die in severe COVID-19. Most people think it's just a viral infection. No, it's far more complex than that. And critically, we have to touch on long COVID and long COVID symptoms. As starting with the basics of the virus is always very important. And as usual, we start off with describing, this is the virus here, the gray part, the globule, represents the virus on the surface, are the blue representing the spike proteins. There are usually about 25 of them per surface of the virus. You have here in, um, in red, the membrane protein, M, and you have a slight orange one here, you can see it here, and this is the envelope protein. 
This is the cut section of the virus, and inside here you have nucleocapsid proteins. These are important because they indicate the primary areas that the immune system tends to target when it's making antibodies or training immune cells to identify the virus. One of the challenges has been in terms of the pandemic is that the vaccine trains prime, well, only the spike protein as a, opposed to natural immunity, which will then get not only the spike protein, but the membrane protein, the envelope protein, the nucleocapsid protein, and has a much broader reach at identifying the virus. When we look at that spectrum of COVID-19, I usually help you to understand that there are different phases of the disease. The asymptomatic phase, again, causes confusion because for some people, and I'll explain why, it's actually a subclinical phase. It's not asymptomatic. They just don't necessarily have any symptoms. Then you have, which is more recent, this COVID bronchitis, which is more associated with Omicron infection, where people have that 100-day cough. We'll be talking about that uh, in the presentation. I differentiate it from a viral pneumonia where you have infection in the lungs related to the virus and sometimes secondary bacterial infection. And that is separate from moderate COVID, where in moderate COVID, you have the viral pneumonia, but on top of it, you have some degree of microclotting, which will be explained. And in severe pneumonia, you have lots of microclotting with the viral pneumonia. The combination is what can oftentimes lead to death. And we'll explain what those characteristics are with regards to microclots. Long COVID is important. Now, it's, it's critical that some people don't think long COVID is real. As I go through the presentation and I show you the cytokine abnormalities with long COVID, you'll realize it is very real. It's just that very often the tests that are done don't indicate any specific abnormality. Routine tests looking at the kidney function or the liver function, uh, full blood count, will not show any abnormalities with long COVID. You have to look for very specific cytokines in order to see it. Again, we will cover that in the long COVID section. But it's important to note the symptoms that are associated with all of these here are potentially possible with fatigue being the most common. 58%, headaches at 48, uh, 44%, and you can see smell abnormalities, 21%. And this is showing you a great paper showing you all the varieties of symptoms that people can have around long COVID. There is a mechanism for this, and it is important that as we continue the research, we try and understand not just how to manage the symptoms, but how to prevent people from getting this kind of pattern possibly not just with COVID, but with other viruses, so post-viral symptoms. Again, the spike protein is critical to understand, and I always go back to it. The spike protein is the most dangerous part of this virus. And based on what we had explained in the prior parts of the, um, the course, we identify that the spike protein here, this is the top of it, this is where ACE2 will bind, and where it will use the lock key mechanism to get into the cell. But because normal proteins bind strongly to the spike protein, it means therefore that it is a risk in terms of triggering autoimmune responses. So that's an essential part to understand whenever we look at COVID-19, that this spike protein is the driver of all the main problems that we see around the disease. And so we must always remember that as we reflect going forward. Just to get the basics right, normal healthy lungs, they are essential. This is how you breathe, deep breath in, deep breath out. You exchange oxygen in the blood. So when you breathe in, oxygen comes down from the atmosphere, well, from the air you breathe. It then exchanges in the blood, and it is also removing carbon dioxide. So every time you breathe, you blow out carbon dioxide, and you take in oxygen. The oxygen is then transported in the bloodstream in red blood cells around the body. And that surface area of the lung is approximately half the area of a tennis court. So it's quite large when you break it down into all the alveoli. And again, we'll cover some of that in some more detail. And that is how you end up with death in severe COVID-19 when a significant number of these alveoli are damaged.
You can see here that picture of the alveoli here. So this is just a section of the lung and all the way the terminal part of it is that you will end up with a very tiny bronchioles and then they'll go into these air sacs. And each air sac has its own blood supply, a vein coming in with a deoxygenated blood and it goes away with oxygenated blood afterwards. So every air sac has its own small blood supply, almost like a tiny capillary. And this is where often the microclotting can occur and that prevents these alveoli from working. There are about 480 million of them in the lungs. And so in severe COVID-19, in order for someone to die, a significant percentage has to be damaged, which we will cover later. This is just to get some context with some of the longer term symptoms that you can see around COVID-19. And again, this is showing you the lung, the trachea going down into the bronchi, bronchioles down to the alveoli. This is the left lung here. But this is just highlighting the characteristic cells that are in different parts of the airway. In the trachea, these are showing you which cells are there. This is a club cell here. You can have a basal cell. These are epithelial cells here. And you do have an element of these PNECs. These are important cells when it comes to sensing oxygen tension and could be one of the drivers for the shortness of breath that people have after with long COVID as well as happy hypoxia. Uh, the bronchioles, again, the slight difference is that you tend to have um, just the same amount of basal cells but you have more of these um, neuroendocrine cells, the PNECs that are present. And down in the alveoli, you can see the lining here. They will have the type two pneumocytes that make surfactant that helps to keep the airways open. And this is how the exchange occurs. So each lung cell has its role to play in the context of function and then can be affected in disease, especially COVID-19. When it comes to the breakdown of the symptoms, similar to what I had showed you before, this again represents the virus coming in. It infects in the upper airway, then it spreads to the lungs. This is an example of what a healthy lung would look like down at the alveolar level. When it's infected here, this is what you would describe as probably a viral inflammatory process. This could be clinical or this could be symptomatic or asymptomatic. This is likely to represent moderate COVID here. And so at this stage here, people are short of breath. Sometimes they need oxygen. Severe damage is where people are on intensive care. And even with high flow oxygen, they could still die. So this is the progression, the different stages of the disease that occurs. And it varies from person to person. We had covered previously the characteristics, the autoimmune characteristics as to why certain people with certain comorbidities are at much higher risk than the normal population. So COVID-19 has shown us that it can present with a wide array of symptoms, some of which are not commonly seen with other viral infections. Okay, so uh, that's the end of that first section. And again, I thank the YouTube people for being with me. Uh, for people who are staying on the webinar, if you have any questions, uh, please add it just after this outro here.